Hey everybody, this is John Sandy, um, our teacher for Canal County Schools in West Virginia. And we have a program starting up called Art Full of Fun. And each of our subjects will begin with the word fun, hopefully, because that's what we're gonna do, we have a lot of fun. Let's begin with some key words to start with on our project, our first project here today. Um, and at any time during this project, if you need to pause, do so, because you probably will in some of these projects because we're not doing a time lapse where we speed forward. So we'll just pause ourselves and give you a chance to pause your video until you have that step finished, then we'll go to the next step. So we're gonna have fun with abstract today. And some key words we wanna talk about is tear, because we're not using scissors today. That should be fun in itself. Contrast, misdirection, warm, cool, and rhythm. Now let's talk about these for just a moment. Tear, obviously we're gonna use our fingers to tear, and I'll walk through that with you. Contrast, oh, like for example, the difference between light and dark. Uh, going one direction, then another direction would uh, fall into the category of misdirection. Warm, warm colors like yellow, orange, and red. Cool colors like blue, violet, or purple, and green. And rhythm. Uh, if you ever see ripples in the water, when you drop a stone in the water and you get this ripple one after the other, that's a rhythm. You're creating a visual rhythm. And we're gonna create some visual textures as well. Textures is not one word I included because that's not one of the keys today, but we could include that if we need to. Our first step is you're gonna need a pencil, you're gonna need a glue stick, you're gonna need uh, two sheets of white paper and one colored sheet, or three sheets of white, depending on what you have available, and of course, crayons. I'm gonna use what are called construction crayons and I'll talk about those in just a minute. First of all, let's begin with our one sheet of white paper. I'm using nine by 12 construction paper. You may have to use copy paper or something else, but size is not as important as consistency. We wanna make sure that we use the same size of sheets of paper uh, throughout this project, okay? All right, so the first step is we have this 9 by 12 construction sheet. Watch what I do. Put my fingers and thumbs close together, and I'm going to travel the border of my paper, and I'm going to tear all the way around. You'll see later why I'm doing this. And I'll curve the corners. Don't feel like you need a sharp corner. Just curve right around the corner, but you can see I'm staying close to the edge of the paper. I do not want to lose too much of my paper in the process of doing this, okay? So here we are. We have our 9 by 12 white paper torn all the way around the edges. The scraps you will not need anymore, so you can discard those and get those out of your way. All right, now once you do that, we take our pencil. I want to divide this into five or seven shapes. Why five or seven? I want to use odd numbers, and I don't have two, I don't want to have too few numbers, and I don't want to get really involved in detail at this point. So pick five or seven ways of creating this into shapes. Try not to make them all the same like blocks. Kind of go in different directions, have fun with it. I have on my example seven, so I'll go use seven as well. There's three, there's four, five, six, and seven. All right, there you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven sections. Now the next thing you're gonna do is color these. Most likely you'll have regular crayons from your school at home. I fortunately have construction crayons, and they are awesome. If you've ever had a chance to buy some, let me show you what I mean by that. Let me pull out a few colors and show you. They're not your traditional crayons. They are just like crayons, work just like crayons, but um, the colors, if you can see those, those are really nice, aren't those cool? Those are really vivid. I love bright, happy colors. Reminds me of summer all year long. Okay, so that's what I'm using in my project. Uh, you may use regular crayons and still do an awesome job. Now what you're gonna do is do a different design in each shape. Design, what do I mean? Like I may do stripes here, I may do circles over here, I may do wavy lines, I may do uh, rectangle shapes, I may do a checkerboard. There's so many things you can do. So that is your next step, is once you have your seven shapes, or five in your case if you wanna do five, inside your torn edges, 
then that is the next step. So if you want to uh, get ready to color, I will show you my example first of all. Ta-da, there is mine, and I have faded colors. I did wavy lines, I did loops, I did circles. Oh, I did a lot of zigzags here and kind of half circles there and just stripes there. So there you go. And you can see what I mean by the construction crowns. They are awesome. And fill them in really good. Anybody that knows me know I knows I do not like uh, chicken scratches. <laughs> and what that means is I don't like to see a lot of white in your color from the paper or whatever color you're using. In this case, we're using white. So here you go, you got your sections. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is our next step. So I'll take a pause right now. Okay, now that we're back together, the next step again, we're gonna take all these sections, and this is fun. I love to tear instead of cut because it's really random, and sometimes you don't have full control, which is kind of cool, because sometimes we do the neatest stuff when we're not in charge, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna take each section and tear them. So here we have our seven shapes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's right. So here we go. Now, the next step is, is I want to use another sheet of white paper, okay? And I'm going to arrange these. This is fun. I'm going to arrange these randomly, first of all, on my paper, anywhere I want. Now, when we talk about abstract, what does abstract mean? Well, it breaks from the norm. It's not something you can easily recognize as, oh, that's a flower, that's a person walking, that's a kite. So abstract takes shapes you know, and they distort them to create really cool ideas that are totally random to what you're used to. Now, I've got them all laid out just for the purpose of laying them out. Now, I'm going to try to arrange those and have fun with them where I think I might like them best. And you could spend some time doing this because there are so many options available. Like I said, you may overlap them. What do I mean by that? Where two things go across each other, that's called overlapping like my two hands. So I'm gonna play around with these. If I have warm colors here, I may put the other warm colors somewhere different so that they don't um, cause me to lose balance. Balance means when my eye looks at something, it looks pleasant. And my eye isn't drawn just to this corner or over to this blank area here. I'm just arranging them so that I can create balance. So that everything seems to be even on each side. Now they may not be exactly the same like symmetrical, but they're even in the sense that the weight over here matches the weight over here. And how do you determine weight? Darker colors give you a heavier weight. Um, size gives you a heavier weight and just kind of play with them until you get what you think might be kind of cool. But you must stay inside the white paper at all times. Now here's where we need our glue stick. Take our glue stick, open it up. Now remember when you're through with the glue stick, screw it all the way back inside before you put the lid on. That way you have a nice clean edge. Sometimes if you ever picked up a glue stick and you can't get the lid off, it's glued shut, isn't it? So you don't want to do that. I apologize, we just had a little technical difficulty, but we'll move on. Uh, as you saw, I was laying out my pieces to glue down. I'm gonna take a little break, a little pause here, so you can stop your video and do the same. Uh, at this point, you want to glue down all your pieces inside the white paper. Make sure you stay completely inside the white paper, and uh, we'll come right back, so we'll take that pause. Okay, we're back, and I uh, hope you have all yours glued down. I have mine glued down, there we go. All arranged to suit what I think would be a nice balance. 
And remember, once I'm done, I can turn this either way and tilt it a little bit, and we'll talk about that as well. So the next step is we are going to take our paper. I want to leave a white border again. We're going to tear with our fingers. I want to leave a little white border all the way around, maybe some more than others. I love irregularity at times. I think it adds to the abstract design. And watch what I do. I'll tear a piece off and move on. That way I don't have a continuous long piece of paper attached to my artwork while I'm trying to tear. It's a little harder when it gets bigger. There's another piece, I'll start again. I wanna leave a little white border. We're tearing, go ahead and do this along with me. And we will go all the way around, following our design, generally speaking. And uh, just like before, it's fun to tear and not use scissors from time to time. It's a nice little change of pace, change of way of doing things. There we go, pour that piece off. I continue on, go on around, leaving a little bit of a white border. Like I said, it will be irregular. It won't be the same all the way around, but we want to hand tear it so that we create this very unique angle to our art piece. And we do want you to tear because that makes every art piece different from everybody else's. All right, so I push that aside. I don't need that anymore. There is that. I could turn it this way or this way. <clears throat> you can put a little bit of an angle in it. Now, if all you have is white paper, then when you mount this on the white paper, you'll take a Sharpie, maybe a dark color, and carefully follow every angle all the way around to separate this from your white paper. In my case, I'm gonna use black, which I love to do. Black creates a nice contrast for my artwork. So there's my black paper. I laid my white on top, see how that stands out? <clears throat> and I wanna make sure I stay on the black paper and put an angle. Any way you wanna turn that, you could do it like that. You could put it, and you could take it off the paper, but look, for the sake of balance, if I take it off on the left, I would suggest somewhere at the top right, all, uh, the opposite of what you're doing, I would let it go off a little bit over there as well. And that way you can tend to maintain a little bit of sense of balance in your artwork, that's kind of cool. The black background also add, adds as a mask and acts as a mask for you. In my case, I'm gonna glue it and I'm gonna put mine in the middle of the black paper, looking all the way around, make sure I'm on black paper, about the same everywhere if I can. It creates a nice, even artwork, so there you go. So my next step is to glue it down. When using your glue stick, please make sure to screw it back inside the, the, the tube itself when you're done because you may have run across this yourself. These lids will glue to the top and they're very hard to get off. Usually warm or hot water soaking will take it off. But to avoid that problem, we will put it back in the tube more done, okay? So now I'm gonna take my artwork. Again, as before, when doing my pieces, I wanna stay close to the edge. I kinda like the purple. It dries clear, but allows me to see everywhere I'm gluing and that's why they make it this way. So I'm going to Follow along, all along the edge. And if you find a piece sticking up, you have two choices, and I'll go over that in a second. Again, this is abstract, so we're not afraid of it. That, that happened, what happens? So I'm gonna center this the best I can, just the way I want it. Parts separated, and I, I pat it down. Now, a little art trick, when you're wanting to really get that to adhere, turn it over and rub it. Don't rub it on the art side because uh, it could damage your artwork, it could smear something, and this really gives you an opportunity to really press your fingers in there and get it everywhere. And it's real nice and easy to do. Okay, so now we have that done. Turn it over and there's our artwork. Our project. And again, if you had to do white on white, take a marker now and very slowly, Go over all your edging and follow that white line. And that will give you a separation between the two whites if that is your means. And it creates a unique uh, effect in itself. So there we have it. This is our fun with abstract on Art Full of Fun. I'm John Sandy and stay with us. We will be bringing you hopefully many more Art Full of Fun projects that you can do at home with hopefully a bare minimal amount of materials needed.